today's video is all about those Dollar Tree pizza pans. We will be showing you 12 different ways to use them. So let's get started. Hey y'all, let's crack. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use a pizza pan that I got from the Dollar Tree, various paints in brown, white, yellow, and red. I'll also use a black permanent marker. This sketch that I made of a turkey face, I did scan it in and I'll put a link to it down below if you'd like to have a copy. A piece of chalk, some twine, various ribbons of choice. I got these from the Dollar Tree and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So to make this pan take the paint better, I'm just going to take a sanding block and kind of scratch it up. I am working on the back of this pan. That's what I prefer to do. And then I'm going to take my brown paint and paint it in. Now I'm using acrylic paint. I would have preferred chalk paint, but I did not have any. And if this is gonna hang outside, you probably do want to use acrylic. It did take three good coats of this, letting it dry completely in between before I was happy with the coverage that I got. I used, I think it was called melted chocolate acrylic paint. You can use any color brown that you would like. Once our paint is dry, I'm going to put my face on and I just kind of sketched out a face so that I would have the proportions. And then I took a piece of chalk and I colored all over the back of this and I laid it on my pan and I trace over the lines and this is going to transfer it to my project. Y'all see us do this all the time. It is my preferred method for being able to get wording or lines onto a project. It just helps me to do it before hand on paper so that I get my dimensions right and sometimes I just type up the words. Once I have my lines transferred to my project then we get to start painting and to me this is the fun part. I start off by painting in the bottom part of the eyes with my white paint and this is chalk paint you see how much easier it's going on. Don't worry if you kind of get out of the lines a little bit we are going to outline this and that's going to fix any of that. Once I got that finished, I came in and I painted the main part of the face with my yellow color. I'm using Maze by Waverly. I love it because again, it's chalk paint and it gets such a good coverage on it. I like the maize color because I thought it stood out against the brown better, but you could use a brighter color if you prefer. Now I did outline my little mouth and I outlined the nostrils, but I didn't worry about those highlight lines. We can always go back in and do those. Once that paint is dry, I'm coming in with my red apple acrylic paint and I'm painting in the wattle and the little tongue. Now, again, I would have preferred chalk paint, but all I had was acrylic and it did work. It just took a couple coats. For the black parts of the face, I'm going to be using a black permanent marker. I prefer to use the permanent markers because I just think that I have way more control with it and I'm always happy with how it turns out. I painted the eyes and the eyelashes and I also painted the inside of the mouth and then once I had that I just kind of went around everything and outlined it with my marker. To me this just kind of finishes it up. It gives it the right shape and it looks so much more professional. For the white parts of the eyes and the nostril I just used a white gel pen and then I also used that for my little highlights on my face and my waddle. You could use paint and a paintbrush if you prefer. I wanted to give this some dimension and kind of give it like almost a feathery look. So I took a fan brush and some nutmeg chalk paint, which is just a lighter brown. And I kind of went around and hit it in areas. This is almost like distressing. Once I had got that finished, I went back with my marker and I finished out my eyelashes. I did some little eyebrows and just kind of did some squiggly marks. Then I took my white gel pen and did the same thing. This is just giving it dimension. Now for my wording, I'm going to use the same process I used for the face. I just colored on the back with a piece of chalk. I laid it on, traced over it, and then I'm using my white gel pen to fill it in. Now, if you have a good handwriting, you can totally do this freehand. I just always worry about my dimensions. 
of course I want to add a bow. I'm from the South and that's what we do. So I grabbed three different ribbons that I liked and I cut two six inch pieces of each. Then I fold them in half and I dovetail those ends, just cutting at an angle. Now to put it together, I'm gonna to use the method that Kay came up with, where you just kind of scrunch them up in the center and then you layer them on top of each other. This is, I'm doing this instead of crisscrossing it because it works better. Now I'm just gonna use a piece of twine. I wrap around about three times, tie it into a double knot and trim it off. Before I put my bow on the front, I do want to add a hanger. So I took a piece of twine and I cut that off, tied it in a knot, making a loop. I'm also gonna cut a small piece of my ribbon. I'll use my hot glue to flood it and then put my ribbon on top and this is just gonna help hold it better. Now we can attach our bow to the top of our little girl's head. I'm gonna use hot glue for that. And then I decided to add a little more dimension by using some fall leaves that I got from the Dollar Tree. I cut three for each side, used a little bit of hot glue to glue them under my ribbon. And once you get those attached, this project will be complete. I love how she turned out. Today we are sharing 12 ways to use those Dollar Tree pizza pans, including three new ideas. We hope that you will love having them all together. If you are a returning friend, thank you so much for your support. We truly appreciate you. If you are new here, we would love it if you would hit that subscribe button if you like what you see and stay tuned because we have lots of DIYs coming your way. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use a pizza pan from the Dollar Tree, some Waverly chalk paint in ink, white, silver linings, and mineral, some wording that I cut out using my Cricut. I will put a link to the SVG that I used for this down below if you would like to have a copy to use with your cutting machine some greenery garland that I had left over from last year, some poinsettias, berries, and greenery that was left from last year. I think I got these at Dollar Tree, some twine, and my glue gun, and some glue sticks. So for this one, we are going to paint our pan to look like galvanized metal. I love doing this painting process. I will warn you that it's going to look like a total mess when you first get started with it, but trust the process, just keep going, and before you know it, you're gonna be amazed at how it blends together and it really does start looking like galvanized metal. Now, I start off with this stiff, um, stencil brush that I get from the Dollar Tree. I like how it does the splotches on here and I start with my lightest color and then I go up to my darkest one. So I put down my white, then I put down some silver linings and then a little bit of mineral and then I put some of my ink paint on there and it is splotchy and messy looking. Then I go and I take some sponge. I just cut up some pieces of a kitchen sponge and I start going back over it. I use a lot of my white and then some of my grays and you see how it starts blending together and it really does start to look like galvanized metal. Once you get this to where you like it, set it aside and let it dry. Now that our paint is dry, we're gonna add our wording and I just took my transfer tape and picked up my wording. Then I put it down on my piece and smooth it out and then take my transfer tape off. Now I was going really slow because I was afraid the transfer tape was gonna pull off pieces of my paint, but it actually worked out beautifully. Now we can start decorating our piece. I'm going to put down a couple pieces of this greenery garland. I think it came from Dollar Tree. I'm not sure. I had it left over from last year. And once I got one piece down, I realized that I had not made my holes for my hanger. So I stopped and grabbed an awl and just punched a hole in each side at the top that I can put my hanger through. Now I'll go back and put down my other piece of greenery garland right on top of the first piece. I think I cut these at like eight or 10 inches, but you cut them to suit your taste. 
Then we're going to come in with three of our poinsettias. I cut off those backs just to make them smoother and I glue those down into the middle. I always like using odd numbers. I just think it looks better. Then I wanted to add a little more texture and a different shade of green to this. So I grabbed some of that iced branch stuff that I got from Dollar Tree last year and I cut off a couple pieces and put one on each side. Then I added in some of these red berries just to kind of finish it up and give it some more character. I love how this all came together. Now the last thing that we need to do is add our hanger. So I'm going to grab some twine. I thread it through a darning needle and push it up through one hole. Tie a triple knot, trim it off, and then we're going to do the same thing to the other side. Once you get this on, this project will be finished. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use a pizza pan from the Dollar Tree, a page from this 2023 Dollar Tree calendar, some red and white wooden beads that I get from Walmart, some Waverly chalk paint in white, some Mod Podge, some twine, ribbon of choice. I did end up adding a third ribbon to mine and my glue gun and some glue sticks. This time we're going to be working on the inside of our pan and I'm still going to rough it up with my sanding block. This just helps it accept the paint better. Once I'm happy with that, I take my Waverly white chalk paint and I give the rim and just the very little bit inside two coats of this and let it dry. And I did go ahead and paint the whole inside of mine with one coat because I wasn't sure if the silver would look odd coming through the thin calendar page. Once my paint is dry, I flip through my calendar and find the December page. That's the one I wanted for this. And then I'm going to take that insert that comes in the pizza pan and I'm just going to trace around it. This is going to give me the right dimensions to put it in my pan. Once we get that trace, we will cut it out. And don't worry if it looks like it's going to be too small. That is going to be covered up and you won't be able to tell at all. Now we're going to put down a coat of our Mod Podge. You do want a kind of thin coat. I put way too much on this and had to take some off because if it's gloopy, it's going to mess up your calendar page. Now I'm going to put my page down and I smooth it out, getting out as much of the wrinkles and the bubbles as possible. But again, be careful. Now you can see that I actually did take a little bit of paint and go around those edges because I was worried that they might show and I wanted them to blend in more, but you don't have to do that. That's why I didn't even show it whenever I did it because they're not going to show at all. I'm going to take my red and white wooden beads and I start making a pattern of red, white, red, white. I did go ahead and lay these out ahead of time and I found that I was going to have a little bit of a gap because the gap isn't big enough to put another bead in. So what I ended up doing was working from the bottom and going up both sides and then meeting in the middle at the top. Up there it's not going to matter if I have a little bit of a gap because we're going to make a bow to embellish this and actually that gap makes it easier to attach the bow. Once our beads are on, I'm going to take my ribbon and make my bow. Now I did switch out that burlap ribbon for some that I had. I think I got that from Hobby Lobby, that real wide one. And then I also added the polka dot ribbon to it because I wanted three different ribbons. I cut a six inch piece of the burlap ribbon or actually two pieces. And then for my red and my polka dot, I cut those just a little bit smaller and I go ahead and dovetail those ends. Then I'm going to gather them in the center and put them side by side. This works better with wide ribbons than it does to layer them crisscross. Once we get them all stacked and gathered, I'm going to take some twine, wrap them around about three or four times and tie a knot. Then we're going to fluff it out and we have a cute little bow. I'll attach it to my sign using some hot glue. 
to make a hanger for my piece, I'm just going to take a piece of twine. I tie a knot in each end of it. And then I'm also going to cut two little pieces of ribbon. I'll flood the end with some hot glue, put the ribbon on top, and this is going to help it stick better. Once you get your twine on, this project will be finished. Just to let you know a little bit about Trish and I, we really are first cousins and we have a passion for crafting. We love to share our craft videos with you, chatting and hanging out with you on lives and meeting new people at craft shows. Hey y'all, it's Kay. Trish and I were challenged by Wendy at White Sparrow Living to use a pizza pan in one of our projects. So I'm going to use this pizza pan that I got at the Dollar Tree about a year ago. It's not your typical pizza pan. It has a lot of holes in it. But I have an idea. I will be using some burlap ribbon. I got mine at Walmart. I needed one and a half of the yellow and less than one of the green. I will be using lots of zip ties in this project, about 41, and one chenille stem. I will be using my big bite hole punch to put a few extra holes in this pizza pan. If you don't have one, you could always use a drill or a nail and a hammer. I'm going to use some of this Loop It yarn, one styrofoam ball, I got these at the Dollar Tree, some brown acrylic paint, and finally, my wire cutters and my rotary cutter. The first thing I'm going to do is mark where I want to place some extra holes towards the outside of my pan. These are going to be where I place the green petals, which will be my leaves for my project. I put mine equal distance apart and I placed enough for five leaves but you may want actually more than that when i got to the end i realized a few more probably would have been ideal but i'm placing my holes in between the holes for the next round so that they will be staggered behind the petals this will all make sense in just a few moments this big bite y'all works amazingly on this pizza pan now i'm going to take some zip ties. I told you I would be using lots of zip ties and at first I started out just placing them through the sections of holes that are going to be where my leaves go. I found the best thing to do was to leave about three quarters to an inch sticking up on that right hand side, the side where you're going to hook into. And once I got those five in place, I went back and started closing them up. You want to leave a pretty good loop size. I'm going to show you that here. We'll do that for all five of them, leaving nice little loops all the way around your pan. Now we're going to start on that first full row on our pan. I'm picking the ones, of course, that are kind of in between where I placed my extra holes. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put a zip tie through a set of two holes and work my way around this pan. This outer row contained 18 zip ties by the time that I am finished. And I am closing them as I go, leaving a nice size loop. Now I'm going to turn it over on the back and let you see what it looks like so far. Nice and flat and ready to be of use. Now let's start on the next row. We're going to skip one set of the holes and move up to the next row. We don't want to start back right in front of where we were. And we're doing the staggered row in between so that our petals again will be staggered I'm making sure I close my loop up kind of in between where that first row is. That placement is important. If you look, you can see how they're crossed there. And now I'm just going to do the same thing I did 
on the last row. We're just going to go in and make loops with all of our zip ties. There will be a total of 12 zip ties on this row. And there's what the back looks like now with all of the zip ties so far in place. Now I'm going to work on the third and final row of zip ties. Again, we are skipping one set of holes around and moving to the next one, staggering the placement from the one beneath it. And we're going to do the same thing, start putting in our zip ties. This row will contain six zip ties. And now I'll show you all of our zip ties in place. I've shown you the front and the back. I'm going to cut all of my burlap with a rotary cutter. You can cut it with scissors. It will just take a little longer. But I'm going to cut all of my pieces at 8 inches. Because I chose to do only 5 leaves, I only need 5 of the green. This is how I'm going to fold the pieces. I'm going to kind of gather it up in the middle and fold in my raw edges. And then a little ways from the top, I'm going to slide the leaf under my zip tie and then pull it tight. I have to use my wire cutters to help me kind of wrench it down because I don't have a lot of strength in my wrist. And I also use my wire cutters to, to then cut it off. I hope that makes sense. Let me show you here again how I kind of pinch that up and then place it maybe two inches down on the leaf under my zip tie and then I pull it down tight and cut off the excess. And that's how I do the five leaves. I don't do the petals the exact same way. The important thing is to keep the raw edges turned in. So now I'm going to cut my yellow burlap and I'm going to do the same thing, guys. I'm going to cut eight inch pieces and I will need quite a few of them, 36 I think to be exact. Now let me show you how I fold my petals. I am bringing them in at diagonal ends, pinching it there in the center, and then folding it in half with the raw edges down. And then I'll come over and place it under my zip tie, just about three quarters of an inch or half an inch. You don't want to put too much. And then I'm going to pull it as tight as I can. And again, I will use my wire cutters to help me really cinch that down snugly and then cut off the excess with my wire cutters. I'm going to show you the folding of the petals a little slower again. You can see I folded it on the diagonal, kind of pinch it in the middle and then fold it down in half and then bring it over to my zip ties. If this part confuses you, you may want to go back and watch that first time I did it again so that you can really get the feel for how to put the petals in. It's not difficult at all, I promise. And then we'll just, of course, pull that tight with our wire cutters and cut off the excess as well. And now we just begin working our way around this pizza pan. There are 18 on this first row, so it does take a little bit of time, and it was a little bit of a learning curve, and I want to make sure I keep everything covered around the edge of the pan. And there's how it looks with the first row completed and our leaves. On to the second row. The second row contains 12 petals. And here's what it looks like with the second row complete.
And there's our finished piece with all of our petals in place. The next thing we need to do is work on the center. I'm going to use a serrated knife and I'm going to cut one of the styrofoam balls in half. I'm going to start right in the middle of the top of this ball and I'm going to wrap this loopy yarn around and around and secure it with hot glue until I get to the end. And when I get to the end, we'll just cut that off. And there's what it looks like so far. This yarn is not sold in the brown color. I had the crazy idea that I could paint on the color, but of course that didn't work. The paint is too thick and it just doesn't go on well with a brush. So what I did was take paint, dilute it with water, stir it up really well, and get more of a dye bath. And so that's what I decided I would do. I would just dye yarn on my styrofoam ball. It's already applied, so might as well go for it, right? This was very messy, so if you do it this way, you might want to wear gloves. Yes, I could have dyed the yarn ahead of time, but I didn't know how much exactly I would need, and I didn't want my whole roll to be in the brown color. And it did take about 24 hours to completely dry. To hang my wreath, I'm going to use my big bite and come in and place a couple of holes right where I want my top to be. This is something that would probably be best done at the beginning, but I didn't want to confuse you and do it at the beginning. And I'll just place a chenille stem down through those holes and twist it into a loop at the back, and that's how we can hang it on our door. And now I'm going to attach our center. I'm just using hot glue, Gorilla Glue Sticks, and glue it right down to the middle. And that's our finished piece. And here it is hanging on my door. Y'all, I love this one. It turned out exactly like I had in mind. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use a pizza pan from the Dollar Tree, some wood grain contact paper from the Dollar Tree, some flat back wooden beads I got from Hobby Lobby, a wooden word from Hobby Lobby, Waverly chalk paint in truffle, some twine, some florals from Joann's, I only use the light purple, some greenery from Walmart and Hobby Lobby, some ribbon from the Dollar Tree, my glue gun and some glue sticks, and some tools from my work caddy. So the first thing I'm going to do is paint the edge of my pizza pan with my truffle paint. I did get the very edges of this and that lip, and I kind of did go on down into the pizza pan a little bit. I'm going to cover it, but I wasn't sure what would show, and I didn't want to take the chance of any of the silver showing. Now I took some parchment paper, and I cut out a rough circle, then I laid it on the bottom of my pizza pan, and I kind of go around that edge there with a pencil, and this gives me a pattern of the size circle that I need. Then I lay that on the back of my contact paper and trace around it with my pencil and cut that out with my scissor. Now we are going to stick our contact paper down to the center of our pizza pan. I just peel off a little bit, stick it down, burnish it, and then do a little bit more until I get it all down. And do make sure you get out as many of those air bubbles as you can. Now I'm going to take those little flat back beads that I get from Hobby Lobby, and I'm going to put them on my pan to see how far around they'll go. I knew I didn't have enough to go completely around, but I was hoping that I had enough that when I put my greenery at the top, you wouldn't be able to really tell that I didn't go all around. Once I got them laid out, I realized I did have enough for that. So then I just take my hot glue and glue those down along the edge. This took about two packs. Now I'm gonna take my little wooden word and figure out where I want it to lay. And then I take some of that lamb's ear that I get from Hobby Lobby and I glue it down to the top of my pan. I did decide that the lamb's ear was enough. I did not use the little eucalyptus that I got from Walmart. I just cut this into pieces and glued it down. Then I took some of this beautiful light purple lavender um, florals that I got from Joann's and I cut off four pieces and glued two on each side with the lamb's ear. 
Now I'm just going to glue down my little wooden word. I want to make a bow for this, so I take some of that burlap and lace ribbon that I love so much from Dollar Tree, and I cut off a piece, and then I just loop it over itself, and then I come back around and make one more loop on each side, so I have two loops on each side, and leave my tails hanging off. I take a piece of twine, wrap it around the center about four or five times, and tie it into a double knot, trim that off, and we have a bow. Now we'll cut those that long tail off, fold it in half, and cut it at an angle. This is called dovetailing. And then you just fluff it up and you have a pretty little bow. We'll attach that to the center with a little bit of hot glue. To make a hanger for this, I just cut off a piece of twine and then I flood the end of it with some hot glue and I take a piece of my paper tape and put over the top of it. This just gives it a stronger hold. Now we'll do the same thing to the other end. Flood it with hot glue and then cover it with paper tape. And there's our finished piece. I think this turned out so pretty. I know it's a cheap pizza pan from the Dollar Tree, but I think it made a beautiful sign. I actually have it hanging in my living room in my gallery wall and it fits in perfectly. Do you like to create with paper? Create beautiful journals, cards, embellishments, and interactive mini albums? Well, you should go and check out our channel, Crafting Cousins Create. There, we slow down the videos and give you step-by-step -step instructions that make it easy for everyone from the beginning to the advanced crafter to follow along. There will be a link to that channel in the description box below. We hope that you'll come over and join us. Hey y'all, it's Kay. For today's project, I'm going to be using a pizza pan from the Dollar Tree, some vinyl that I got at Hobby Lobby when it was 50% off, this four by six package of paper that I got at Hobby Lobby, just a few sheets I will need, some ribbon, just some light pink from my stash, some adhesive magnetic buttons. I'm going to use one of my hole punches, some gemstones from the Dollar Tree, some gel Gorilla Super Glue, a few tools, some cable ties that I had in my stash, some gemstones that I got from Hobby Lobby when they were 50% off. They come in four sizes in this one container. And then I'll need some E6000. First, I'm selecting four sheets from my paper pad. I'm going to take some gemstones and select four of the best looking in the bag I could find. I'm going to use my hole punch, although it's not the exact size because these stones vary so much in size. But I'm selecting areas on my paper that I think are going to be pretty for my magnets. Just using Mod Podge, I will apply the scrapbook paper to the back of the gemstones. I just center it on what I think is the cutest on my paper. This is a fun project that you could get anyone involved with at any age. This could be a great project for girls going off to college. And now I'm going to take a circle that is 11 and a half inches, which is the diameter of the center of the pizza pan. You could use a plate or whatever you have to cut the circle. If you have a cutting machine, you could use that. And now I'm just taking my scissors and I'm going to cut out my vinyl circle. You could use scrapbook paper and Mod Podge. I just wanted it to be a little faster. And then I'm putting it down slowly on my pizza pan. I want to make sure I have as few bubbles as possible. And so I'll use my scraper and slowly work my way across the pan. I'm pretty meticulous about these kinds of things. 
Are you a meticulous crafter? Well, now I'm taking my tape cable ties and I'm going to apply them to the back of my pizza pan. These will help hold on the ribbon that will hang my magnetic board to the wall. This is going in my new studio. I use a little of that adhesive on the back, the Gorilla Glue, just to make sure it stays nice and tight. And now I'm just looking at what size I want to use, trimming up those edges so it goes in easily through my cable ties and tying a couple of knots. I love cable ties. I got mine on Amazon and I have used them for so many things, especially in making wreaths. And now I'm going to decorate the edge of my pizza pan, excuse me, memo board. I'm using the largest pearl that was in my little bucket and the second largest. And I'm just staggering them, larger stone, neck size, around the pizza pan. I start out applying just a stream of glue on the edge, but I end up taking a popsicle stick and just applying it right to the center of each flat back pearl. It just made less of a mess that way, and it seemed to use less glue, honestly. And I just worked my way around the pan. I'm a pearls and pink kind of girl. And now I'm trimming up those magnets with my detail scissors. And I'm going to apply a coat of Mod Podge to the back to seal the paper. And after I do that, well, I just peel off the sticky back from the magnets and stick them to my gems. I had a bow in my stash, really simple, tied with a zip tie in the center, and I'm going to use that at the top of my pan. Just place a little hot glue, and a little Gorilla Glue helps too. And I placed a little rose right in the center for my stash. And there it hangs. I love my new memo board. I think it would be a great addition to a dorm room or a studio or craft room. Hey y'all, it's Trish. Kay and I are challenging our craft group members to repurpose a pizza pan into a decor piece. So for today's project, I am starting with a pizza pan from the Dollar Tree. I wanted to use the back side of the pan for my piece, so I flipped it over, roughed it up a little bit with my sanding block, and painted it with my Ivory Waverly chalk paint. I'm not sure if roughing it up helped that much as it still took three coats of the paint to get a smooth coverage. I love these little wooden pumpkins from the Dollar Tree and thought it would be such a cute addition to a door hanger. I pulled several colors of paint from my stash that I thought I might use. I painted the stem with my brown paint. I didn't think the plain orange was right for my project, so I mixed a little brown with it to tone it down some and was really happy with the burnt orange color that I achieved. While my paint was still damp, I took some yellow and did a little highlighting to give the pumpkin some depth. I wanted to make the ridges on my pumpkin 3D for added dimension. I took my pencil and sketched out how I wanted them to lay. Then I took a thin flexible twig I got from a bush in my yard and using my hot glue I attached it to my pumpkin over the lines. Once the glue was set I just trimmed the twig with my scissors. I really love the look the twig gave my pumpkin. I bought a new glue gun with a precision tip and I was not thrilled with how it worked. I kept having to push the glue stick down into it to get it to come out. I will be taking it back. If you have any suggestions for a good precision glue gun, please leave them in the comments below. 
Now I want to cover the stem of my pumpkin with pieces of my twig. I broke off several small pieces and then just applied them side by side on my stem using my hot glue. I didn't worry about them being too long. Once the glue was set, it was easy to trim them down to the shape of the stem. I love how this little pumpkin turned out. To give my sign a shiplap feel, I used a pencil to lightly sketch lines across the pan using my ruler to keep them evenly spaced. I like using the pencil because you can put the lines in lightly and then darken them up to get the look that you want as well as being able to erase any stray marks. Once I got the lines sketched on, I just went back and filled them in. I held my pencil at a slight angle to get a more rustic look. To soften up the look a bit more, I just used a little of the ivory paint and dry brushed it along my lines. I used my Cricut to cut out the words, Hello Pumpkin. I like to use the clear contact paper from the Dollar Tree to transfer my words onto my projects. It is much cheaper than the Cricut transfer tape and in my opinion it works just as well. I put the tape over the letters and use the angle end of my pokey tool to burnish it down. Then I peel the backing away, position the word on my piece, and burnish it again. Peel off the tape and your wording is complete. I am pretty sure this was an old piece of vinyl and that it had gotten too hot in storage because the backing didn't want to release from the vinyl. I just played with it a little bit and it finally came off and worked just fine. I wanted to trim out my sign, but I didn't want to use rope again. I took one of the hats from the Dollar Tree, clipped the first thread, and it unraveled into a long piece of braided trim. Using hot glue, I attached the trim to the edge of my pan. If you own a cutting machine and you would like any of the SVGs that I use in my projects, just send me a message and I'll be happy to share it with you. Our email is in the description box below. If you don't own a cutting machine and you would like to purchase the vinyl wording, I will post it in our store over on Facebook. There will be a link to our store in the description box as well. A little more hot glue at the top of the trim, securing it down, and I love how this looks. Now that our piece is trimmed out, I glue my pumpkin down under my wording. The Dollar Tree has some gorgeous fall flowers and picks right now. I grabbed some of the ones I picked up to give our project a little bit of color. I love those little mini mums, but they kind of overwhelmed the rest of the project, so I decided to just use the colorful berry sprigs. To add a little more fall to our sign, I used four of the autumn leaves in different colors. Of course we have to give our project a bow. I cut off a 20 inch piece of my burlap ribbon that I got from the Dollar Tree and started playing around. I thought I wanted to just do a simple bow, but I wasn't really liking how it looked. I finally cut the piece in half and made two loops put them side by side, and pinch them up in the middle. I cut one more piece to be the tail and pinched it up with my loops. Now I just take a piece of twine, wrap it around the middle several times, and tie it off at the back. A little fluffing, dovetail the ends, and we have a cute bow. Then I just attach it in the middle with a little hot glue. To make a hanger for my sign, I took a piece of twine and tied knots in each end. Then I just flooded them with glue and let it dry. And there's our door hanger. This is one of my favorite projects. I think it's going to be the perfect piece to carry us into fall. 
We love hearing from y'all. It really just makes our day. Make sure you write down in the comments and let us know which project is your favorite. And if you have any suggestions, please leave those there as well. We love seeing all the ideas you guys have. Hey y'all, it's Kay. Let's make a Grinch wreath by using, first of all, this pizza pan, this Grinch face that I printed out on my computer, a Santa hat that I got from the Dollar Tree, a piece of this feather boa, I got mine at Hobby Lobby, some clothespins, I got mine at the Dollar General and they were $2 for a hundred, some Waverly white chalk paint, some acrylic paint in yellow, red, and Grinch green of course, and finally, my paintbrush and a jot permanent marker. The first thing I'm going to do is give my pizza pan a good sanding using my sanding block that I got at the Dollar Tree. This will remove any residue that is on there and it will help the paint to adhere much better. And the first thing I'm going to do is give it a good base coat of this white Waverly chalk paint. This will help the acrylic paint adhere to the pan. And now I'm going in with a paintbrush and I'm going to paint, first of all, 24 red clothespins. And yes, you could spray paint these. And I considered it, but I couldn't find a green that I really liked. So I just go in and take my time while I'm doing something else and listening to my favorite crafter and paint all of them red. And then I go in and paint 21 green clothespins as well. You want to paint the back and the front. And now let's paint the pizza pan. We're going to give it that sickly green Grinch color. I'm going to use this scrap piece of foam board and just draw around it and cut me a piece so that I can stuff it up in the hat and it will stay upright on my door. I found the hat just to be too floppy for my taste. And now I want to try out the placement for my Grinch face. And I'm going to secure it with a little washi tape. And then I'll put in my carbon paper so that I can trace it on easily. And I'll just begin tracing around the Grinch face. It did get a little bit of the black carbon in places that I didn't want it to, but that was no problem. I just came in later and touched it up again with a little more green paint. And now I'm going in with my jot marker. It's a permanent marker that I got at the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to outline all of the areas that need to be black. This marker also layers really well if you have to do a second coat in an area. And now let's paint in our eyes. I'm going to use some yellow paint, and I will take about two coats to get really good coverage. And now I'm going to place on my clothespins. I start at the middle of the bottom with the first three green pins, and then I just work my way side to side, doing three of each color in each section. And now I'm coming in with a little hot glue on the edge and place on my Santa hat, and I just pull it down snugly. Then I'm taking a piece of this green marabou or feather boa, and I'm going to attach it right up under the edge of the hat. I'm going to use some cable tie mounts on the back, and that's how I'm going to hang it. And then I tie in a little twine, just using a couple of little knots. And I'm leaving some slack, place a little glue, and there it is. And finally, it is hanging on my studio door. Merry Christmas, y'all! For this project, I'm going to be using a Dollar Tree pizza pan, a piece of burlap, some black and white check ribbon that I got on sale at Hobby Lobby, some florals that I picked up at Hobby Lobby in the Dollar Tree, some twine, 
my glue, and some white Waverly chalk paint that I finally found at my Walmart. The first thing I'm going to do is paint the front of my pizza pan with my chalk paint. I ended up doing two coats for full coverage. I took my piece of burlap and measured up 5 inches and cut a piece off. I learned a little trick to cut burlap a few years ago. Find where you want to cut it, then grab a piece of the burlap string and pull it out at that area. You will need to be a little careful not to break it. Once you get it pulled out, it leaves a line that shows you where to cut to get a straight cut. I did this on each side to even it up. Do y'all have any tricks for cutting fabric? Leave them in the comments below, I would love to hear them. I decided to go ahead and make a hanger for my sign before I decorate it so that I don't crush anything by doing it at the end. I take a piece of twine and tie a small knot on each end. Then I just flood it with hot glue and let it dry. My sign is lightweight so this holds it perfectly. Now I'm going to attach my piece of burlap to my pan. I figure out where I want it to cross on the pan and then I glue down one side on the back. I want to make sure that it fits snugly against my pan so I fold it in at the curved area and glue it down again. For the front of my pan, I'm going to attach the burlap with my Mod Podge. It takes a while for it to dry, so I take my glue gun and put a bead at the edge of the pan and on the curve to hold my burlap in place. Then I apply Mod Podge across the front and press my burlap down into it. At the other side, I will secure it with hot glue at the curve, on the edge, and at the back. Now I'm going to use my wider black and white check ribbon across the front of the pan on top of the burlap. I measure out a piece and cut it. On the front, I secure it at the curve and then I put a drop in the middle to hold it in place. I didn't like how the glue showed on the ribbon but I'm going to be adding wording to mine so I'll be able to cover it up. I end up going back and running a bead of glue along each side to hold it, so if I do another one, I'll just skip putting that drop in the middle. And attach it to the back with hot glue the same way I did my burlap. I am recycling a wooden piece that says welcome. When I pried it off of my original piece, I broke it into two places, but I glued it back with my hot glue and you can hardly even tell that I broke it. I'm going to paint the top of the word with my white chalk paint to make it pop out against my ribbon.
I originally got this wooden word piece at Hobby Lobby and I think I only paid like $1.49 for it. I glue it onto my ribbon, offsetting it from the middle. I'm going to take some of my lamb's ear that I got out of the wedding section at Hobby Lobby and attach it to the side of my sign. This was on sale this week for 50% off, so I only paid a dollar per stem. Now I'm going to add some cute little yellow daisies that I got from the Dollar Tree and glue it all down. Did y'all have a nice 4th of July weekend? Were you able to celebrate with friends or did you have a quiet time with family? Now I'm going to take my one and a half inch black and white check ribbon and make a simple bow. I just make three loops and then pinch it in the middle and use a small piece of floral wire to twist around it to hold it in place. Then I take another piece of ribbon and tie a knot in the middle wrap it around the middle of my bow and glue it at the back. Then I just fluff the bow and glue it onto my sign in the middle of my florals. I thought that my sign needed to look a little more distressed and more rustic looking. So I took my old eyeshadow palette and using the darkest color and a stiff brush I applied some of the eyeshadow to all the raised areas. This is my favorite way of distressing a project. I like how much control it gives me and I love the finished look. And there's our finished sign. I think this is really cute and would fit in with any farmhouse decor. Hey y'all, it's Kay. For this project I'm going to be using a $1 pizza pan from the Dollar Tree. One yard of this navy blue upholstery trim that I got at Hobby Lobby, it cost one dollar. Some Waverly white chalk paint. Some red and blue chalk paint by Plaid. Some wooden beads in white and also some in red. These wooden letters from Hobby Lobby. Some red, white and blue scrapbook paper. Some Mod Podge by Plaid. Some red, white and blue ribbons. And finally, my hot glue gun and my Gorilla Glue Sticks. The first thing I did was paint the edges of my pizza pan in my white Waverly chalk paint. I gave it two good coats. And then I painted my USA letters in white Waverly chalk paint and I gave them two good coats. My original plan was to paint my letters red, white, and blue, the first one being in red and the last one in blue. But then when I got them on my scrapbook paper, I really didn't like them. So I came back and I painted all three letters in the navy blue color. I have this 12 inch circle that I use as my pattern and I'm going to lay it on the back of this blue with white stars scrapbook paper. This piece of paper is only eight and a half by 11. So I'm going to make it as wide as I can at that 11 inch mark. And then I'll just come in and cut that out with my scissors. Then I'm going to lay the circle out on my striped paper and I'm using a little washi tape to hold it down and then I just trace it off. And then I'm going to come in and cut out the entire circle. And then I just lay my field of blue onto my stripes and trace the line down and then cut that out. And now I have my two pieces for my pizza pan. I'm going to use Mod Podge, a nice generous coating. And by the way, I did sand this pizza pan before I started this project. And I'm going to lay down my stripes and then my blue. 
And once it dries, I'm going to put a coat of Mod Podge on the outside as well. And now I've found the center of the top part of my pan and I'm measuring over about four inches and placing a dot. And then I'll measure over four inches to the left of my center dot and place another dot. And I'm going to use my big bite hole punch on the 1 8 inch hole. And I'm going to come in and punch a hole on those dots. And you can see how well it works through this metal. It cuts through it like butter, y'all. And now I have my second hole. And that's how I'm going to place on my beads on this piece. I am going to be stringing my beads on this thin nylon cording. I will just use my lighter to heat the ends so that they seal really well. I'm going to tie one end on to my pan and then I will just string on my 30 beads, 15 of each color. And when I get to the end, I will tie it off again with a couple of heavy duty knots. And this is how I will eventually hang my piece. The next thing I'm going to do is cut some ribbon to make a messy bow for this project. I'm going to be cutting six inch pieces of each of these ribbons and I will just crisscross them. I'm doing them in reverse order from the bottom up. And I just chose red, white, and blue ribbons that I thought would look good with my project. And then I'll cut an extra piece of ribbon to tie right around the middle. I'll just pinch it in the middle and tie a piece of ribbon around it. A couple of knots, cut off that excess, and then I just start fluffing my bow. And I'm going to fluff it quite a bit till I kind of get it laid out in my mind the way I want it to go. And the next step is to dovetail my ends or either cut them at an angle. I'm going to leave some longer, some shorter. I'm just trying to make sure most of them show once they're on my pan. Now I'm just going to put my letters on my pan. I'm going to center them on the red and white striped part at the bottom. And I think the blue really was the better choice. Now I'm going to go in with that upholstery trim and I'm just going to glue it around to the edge of my pan so that we can have a nice finished edge. Now I'm just going to apply my bow to the top center of my pan using a little hot glue there. And I'm going to place this little star right in the middle just to dress it up a little bit more. And that's our finished piece. I think it turned out great. It was just like I envisioned in my head. And I want to wish all of you a very happy 4th of July. Please give this video a big thumbs up. It really does help us so much. If you like crafting, we'd love to see pics. Come on over to Facebook and join our group, Crafting Cousins Crafty Corner. We will leave a link down in the description box below. it's Trish. Our friend Wendy from White Sparrow Living challenged Kay and I to use a pizza pan in one of our projects. So for this project I'll be using this pizza pan from the Dollar Tree, some Krylon spray paint in satin white, this printable that I designed and printed out. I will put a link to it down in the description box below if you would like to have a copy, some carbon paper, some Model Magic Air Dry Clay and a silicone mold from Walmart. Some acrylic paint in white, mint green, sunny day, and lemon yellow. Some bees from Hobby Lobby. Some bubble wrap. Some Mod Podge. A jot permanent marker and some graphic illustration markers, but you could use a fine tip marker. A craft stick. My glue gun and some glue sticks. And some paint brushes. So the first thing I did was remove the label from my pan and then I took it outside and gave it several coats of my spray paint. I do this in light coats and I did paint the front and the back because I like my backs to be finished. 
While that's drying, I use my air dry clay and I press it into my mold to get these little flowers and these leaves. Now I ended up doing probably eight of these flowers, about six or seven of the leaves, and about eight of these vines that are on the bottom here. It doesn't take a lot of this clay. You just pinch off a little piece of it and press it down into it, and it takes the shape of whatever you're putting it in there. I did try not to get it outside of the design, though, because you have to cut it off if you get too much of it on there. So I tried to contain it in there. Once I get it in there, I just flip it over and peel it back out. You don't have to wait for this to dry. I peel it out and then leave it to air dry for 24 to 48 hours. Once our pieces are dry, now I'm going to paint them with my acrylic paint. For my vine of leaves and for my loose leaves, I'm using that mint green acrylic paint. And then for my roses, I'm using this lemon yellow for some of them. And then for some of them, I'm using my white acrylic paint. And then once that has dried, I go back in with a stiff brush and a little bit of my white paint and paint over the top of my yellow roses just to highlight some of it. And then I use the yellow and go over the white ones to do the same thing. This kind of gives it a variegated rose look. I love that two-tone. Now I'm gonna take my pan and I use my craft stick as a spacer and I go all around the rim of this marking lines. Once I get that done, I come back around and I mark the lines in that little sloped part of my pan as well. Once I get my lines all finished, I take my jot permanent marker and I go and fill in every other block. I'm doing a McKenzie Childs pattern, just in case you haven't figured that out yet. <laughs> and I think that this pen does a perfect job on this pan. Now I will tell you when I was laying out my blocks, I miscalculated and I had to kind of judge it there at the end. So two of my blocks are not the same as the rest of them. If this would bother you, you probably want to take a little bit more time in the beginning to figure out your spacing. Once I have the rim of my pan done, I come back with some of my sunny day yellow. It's not as bright as that lemon. And I use a piece of my bubble wrap and I just kind of spounce it onto my pan. I didn't want a solid coverage. I want it to kind of give the feel of a honeycomb. Now I'm going to take my graphic that I had printed out and I'm going to use my gnome bee and do some fussy cutting to get him cut out exactly. Now for mine, I did blow it up because I want the gnome to fit into my pan pretty, pretty big. And then for the wording, I'm actually going to trace it in there and do it by hand. For my bees, I'm gonna use some 3D bees instead of the ones that's with my graphic, but you don't have to do this. I'm gonna give you a copy of this one and of the one that I did that is all together. And if you want the one that's all together, you could just print it out, trim it up, and put it into the center of your pan. Now I took my bee kind and my little bees, and I cut them apart as well and figured out where I wanted them to be placed. And I use a little bit of washi tape and tape it down. Then I put my carbon paper under there and trace over the image and this transfers it to my project. Now for my bees, I'm only doing that swirly part because I'm gonna be using the 3D bees. Once I get everything transferred over, I go to my graphic illustration markers and I fill it all in. Now, if you don't have these graphic illustration markers, you can use a fine tip Sharpie. It would work just as well. Now I take my Mod Podge and I start sealing in the bottom of this and the edge. I didn't want the paint to chip off of the edges of this. Now what I did forget is that those graphic illustration markers will smear when you get them wet. So I had to go back and fix that. Now I'm gonna take my little gnome and I put some Mod Podge on the back of him and then press him down and then go over the edges and seal him in. Now I'm gonna take my little flowers and my leaves and my vines and I lay them out and figure out where I want them to all be. And then I just use some hot glue and my glue gun and I glue it all down into place. 
to make a hanger for this, I just take a piece of twine, I tie a knot in each end, then I flood one end with hot glue and I put a piece of paper over it to hold it in place. And there's our finished project. I love how this one turned out. I think he is so stinking cute. This project was actually inspired by a mirror that I saw on the McKenzie Childs website where she used these colorful flowers and I thought this would be a fun twist on our pizza pan art. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use a pizza pan from the Dollar Tree, some sandpaper, I got mine from the Dollar Tree, this tin Hello Word that I picked up from Pop Shelf, some various colors of chalk paint. I did not use the celery and I didn't use the red acrylic paint, but I did use the crimson, the malachite, the ink, and the white some twine, a jot permanent marker, and a graphic illustration marker, various red and green ribbon that I had in my stash. I have lots of different shades and lots of different sizes, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So the first thing I needed to do was take my sandpaper and rough up my pizza pan. This is going to help my paint stick to it and it won't pull off as I put on the different coats. Once I got it roughed up, I used my Waverly white chalk paint and I painted the whole front of this, being careful not to get any on the back. I put a really good coat on and then I'm just going to sit it aside and let it dry completely. I'm also going to paint my hello word. I was afraid that it wouldn't show up well against this white background with it being the tin color. So I used my ink chalk paint, gave it two good coats and left it to dry. Now that my paint is dry on my pizza pan, I used my ruler and I made a line about halfway down it all the way across. I did end up erasing part of it and I made a wiggly line that looks like a bite was taken out of my watermelon. Then I'm going to use my Waverly chalk paint in crimson and I'm going to fill in the bottom part of this. Now you notice as I go around my curve, I'm being careful to keep it on the inside of that. I didn't want to go up on the top part of that curve because that's going to represent the white part of the watermelon. When you look at a slice of watermelon, you have that green rind, then you have that little white area, and then you have the meat. And that's what I'm trying to represent with the painting on this. We're going to give this a really good coat of our crimson paint and we will leave that to dry. Now I'm going to take that malachite green and I'm going to paint just the very top edge of my pizza pan. Again, I wanted to make sure I didn't get it on the curved edge. I only want it on the top. This is going to be the rind of my watermelon. I gave it one good coat and left it to dry. While our pizza pan's drying, I'm going to cut my ribbons. I cut them at about eight inches. I cut two of those red ones, and then I thought, wouldn't it be cute if I added some seeds onto this as well? So I took my permanent marker and I drew out some little seeds all over my red ribbon. Then I just colored those in, and I think this turned out so stinking cute. Now I'm going to finish cutting my ribbons down to the eight inches. I used about three different colors of green and four different colors of red. You use whatever you have on hand. I didn't want to have to go out and buy anything. And then once I got them cut, I'm going to layer them on top of each other fold them in half, and I'm going to cut them in an angle, giving them a dovetail. I do this to all of my thicker ribbons, but then once I got to those that weren't quite so thick, instead of dovetailing, I just cut those at an angle. Now we're just going to stack these up in a crisscross pattern. You're going to put two green, two red, however you want to lay them. Once you get all of your ribbons on there, you're going to gather it up in the center, take a piece of twine, wrap around about three times, tie it in a knot, and trim it off. And then once you fluff it up, you have a cute little messy bow. 
Now that my paint is dry, I'm going to add some seeds to my watermelon. I'm just going to use my pencil and trace in some, and then I'll use my permanent marker and color those in. Now, there is no right or wrong way to do this, and there's no perfect amount. I probably did add too many seeds to my watermelon, but I thought it was cute. You're just going to make a little oval and fill it in. Now, before I put my bow on, I did want to put a hanger on, and I had got some paint on the back of this, so I'm just going to use a piece of sandpaper and clean it up real well. I can't stand for my backs to look messy. Then I'm going to take a piece of twine, fold it in half, and tie a knot. That's going to be my hanger. I'll flood it with some hot glue on the back, and then I'm going to cut a little piece of ribbon to go over the top, and this is just going to hold it in place well. Now I'm going to add my word and my bow. I'm going to use some of my Fix-All Adhesive for the Stronghold and some hot glue for the Fast Hold. I'll put the Hello right there to the side. Then I'm going to take my messy bow, put a little bit of hot glue on the back, and glue that on. And with that, this project is finished. hope you enjoyed our compilation video today because we certainly enjoyed sharing our crafts with you. We hope that you will join us all week for Made It Monday, Wild Card Wednesdays, Transformation Thursday, and finish off the week with Craft Chat on Saturday mornings. Bye y'all!